six pounds. He is an undefeated fighter with 13 professional victories. All 13 victories coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Roland, Oklahoma, Big Rick Dyer. Ross the ring in the red corner. He steps in wearing black, trimmed in gold, and weighing in at 240 and three quarter pounds. He also maintains an undefeated professional record with 25 victories. 24 of those victories coming by way of knockout. Representing El Paso, Texas, David Nino. The El Nino, David Rodriguez. He's managed by Bob Spagnola, longtime friend. Bob has it all in perspective. He said, We'll find out how good he is tonight. <laughs> Sammy Castle looks like a midget in there. How's he going to handle these big guys? David Rodriguez and Rick Dyer. Put on your seatbelt, folks. Send somebody to the refrigerator. You don't want to miss this one getting up for beer. Get ready for the fireworks. Big David Rodriguez. 243 quarter pounds. 276 pound Rick Dyer. Two undefeated heavyweights. Look at this. Dyer comes out as a southpaw. How about that? There's a wrinkle we didn't hear about. Well, you know what? These guys are athletes. So they'll try to move around. And then we'll see what happens with the chin. Already a smile from Dyer. Trying to put pressure on this guy. Dyer looks a, a lot more awkward than Doug Rodriguez. Rodriguez looks smoother to me right off the get-go here. And Dyer is like leaping into the fray here. Hey, he's on the road. He says the pressure is on Rodriguez, but you know what? He needs to get through this early guy and try to settle in if he can. Well, Rodriguez is blasting to the body already. I don't understand this southpaw stuff. We asked him if he was an orthodox fighter. He said, "Yes, I am." Does he think he's confusing this guy? Well, uh, maybe he just uh, looks like a little bit more of a natural lefty. He, he looks like, we'll see how long he stays with it. I mean, right now, he's going to take away some things, but he'll be open for a right-hand lead. And he must have figured that the right-hand lead was a better thing to try to come at him than a double left hook. Well, they're so massive, you know, that either one of these guys would aim to get away with a lot. And they're just right. relying on their power in their first fights, but now they're fighting two equal giants, you might say. I mean, here's a guy, Rodriguez, who's uh, 6'5", looking up in the eyes of his opponent. That's the first time in his career that's happened. This guy, Dyer, is awkward, but he's nowhere near as awkward as the Lua. And he's putting pressure on Rodriguez. Man, he cracked Rodriguez with a left hook. Actually, it's a left cross in his case because he's fighting right. the southpaw. And he did it before the referee could break them. He knew how to work on the inside. It's a straight right hand right down the middle. And that's the way to fight a southpaw. So Rodriguez knows what he's doing in there, too. He's planting. Not a good idea to stay there. Feels the rope, slides down. Now he looks for Bangs the belly of Big Rick Dyer. That'll get your attention in a hurry. Looping right hand, misses the chin. Ticket for the jaw, just got the glove. Oh, two big guys. You expect them either guy to be dropped at any moment with a minute to go in round number one. Sam Gus, okay, guys, separate what I tell you. That cut catches him. Rock Dyer. Now he flashes into the middle. Back upstairs with the left hand. Crazy right hand. And that tumbled him a little bit, didn't it? Yes. Did that Dyer, rock the knees? Dyer got in some trouble there, and he has to tie up, and he's breathing a little bit hey, heavy. He was hey. nailed by Rodriguez with some good counter shots. Little man, so to speak, almost knocked over the big giant. Remember, we're at altitude here. This is He's locked on his feet. Big left hook catches him. Is the big guy going to topple? He has to hang on. Look at his legs. He's real loose in the knees. His heels are heavy. And Rodriguez is the real. The big guy crumbles down like a big redwood tree. He hits the canvas. It's up to five and six for the first time. Dyer takes canvas. Seven. And he's up at eight. He barely How about made it that? up. He, he barely, barely made, made it up. You're right, David. So much for Rick Dyer and his 13-0 uh, as the bell ends, and I don't know if he can survive. Look at him. He's still on his feet. He got cracked. David Rodriguez is the real deal, my friend. Oh, did he really come in and land some big shots? And Dyer is very tired. Yes, sir. Don't go right.
wrapping up on the inside. Push him off. One, two. Push him off. Okay? Three. It's two punches now, not three, two. Remember that Rodriguez is just pouring. Good body shots, good left hook, steps back, works the body again. And Dyer hasn't been hit with four punches like that in a fight, most likely. Good body shots, the right hand, head shot. Now you see the wobbling and the bobbling, and down goes the big man. And he's such a big guy, he has to pull himself up, and he was barely able to do that. And you Let's suspect go, that he'll be having a Let's huge go. order to get through round two. Be very much surprised if he can. David Rodriguez to me appears to be perhaps the future of the heavyweight division. Big Rick Dyer, loaded with power, loaded with size, but he doesn't have the athletic skills of this guy, Rodriguez, who they pointed out as a baseball player as well. Look at this! Big left hand, he's not going to get through the crowd, Dave. Yeah. Tries to hang on and he's staggered again. He and needs he to double jab. He's not double jabbing. I know, he can't box with this guy. He finally has spun to the canvas. The referee is going to call it a knockdown. Three, he hit four, him and then tried to get five, out of the way. It's six, up to six seven, and seven. It's eight. an official knockdown. Okay. He takes the eight count. Continue. Ref says, are you okay? Dyer comes back for more. He's not going to survive this round, folks. Stick around. Big stick shot to the left hand. He's ready to go again. Turns his back. Referee stops the fight. It's all over. It's the second round. Technical knockout victory for the new sensation on the heavyweight scene. You're going to hear a lot more about the name. Listen to it. David Rodriguez. What tremendous power and good perception. He finds the opening and he just drills his opponent. He takes advantage of the big guy and just topples him down. He just really... A juggernaut at this point. He just keeps going through guys. down in round one now in round two the good right hand Dyer can't keep him off good left hook and again he hurts Dyer Dyer is wobbled here practically out of his feet Rodriguez steps in and then does the turn didn't have to be called the knockdown but it didn't matter because right after that the fight's over hits him turns him spins him great and athletic tosses move him. Dave great athletic move too Gets the call, and then moments later, as the big right hand gets in, just too much David Rodriguez. And look at the balance. Power coming through. And nice left hook here. And look at that. That's that's tremendous power on the side. i got to tell you something, Dave. You and I have called a lot of fights. I haven't seen a better up-and-coming heavyweight in a long, long time. This guy might be in a class by himself. It's still too early to tell. He still hasn't fought a contender yet. Rick Dyer was attesting that he was a mountain of a man, a huge man, and an undefeated heavyweight. But now he's got to go up and fight a real contender, a top 20 heavyweight, and see how he performs. But at this stage, if his hands stay well, he is going to be, I think, the future, perhaps, of the heavyweight division. That might be a bit premature, but we'll see how it unfolds. Okay, we have to make it official, so let's go to our classy ring announcer, Lupe. Go ahead, take it away, Lupe Contreras. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Sam Garza stops the bout with an official time of 45 seconds of the second round. Your winner, by way of technical knockout, from El Paso, Texas, David Nino Rodriguez. The crowd in attendance here, of course, we're in El Paso at the Don Haskins Center on the campus of the University of Texas El Paso David from right here in El Paso so they absolutely love him our man Dave Bontempo will move into position watch this it's the end of the fight as the big guy falls for it he shrugs him off and lets him fall and then you'll see the end of the whole show big stiff left hand and that's the way to fight a guy who comes at you southpaw he turns his back it's academic at this stage and referee sam gaza stops the fight all right davy boy bon tempo take it away my pal uh, well david pretty soon this crowd is going to hear you uh, you made a tremendous statement you want to say anything to the people who watch this tremendous thing tonight here i love all my i love all of you Thank you very much for the support. I'm so glad you guys came out, whether it's for Ivan or for me, whatever. I'm glad you're here. Thank you. You said before this week 
You wanted to be a breath of fresh air in the heavyweight division, and this was a big chance to make a statement. Do you feel you made that statement? Oh, definitely. What else can I do? I knocked out an undefeated guy in the second round. I dropped him in the first. Now, what did he show you, and, and what did you key off in this fight? Uh, he, he was real unorthodox, real kind of sloppy, and uh, but strong. So I knew I had to uh, just kind of get under his uh, his left cro his left cross, and uh, or his his left cross. And uh, when I did that, when I made him miss, then I was able to come back up with a right and come back with a hook. All right, we're going to take a look at the second round knockdown that you had here. You had one, of course, in the first round. Uh, tell us how you were setting this up, and you actually were able to spin him, too. Uh, yeah, yeah, because he, his head is right there for the taking. And every time he tried to clinch me, I just said, hell, I'm going to slip out of it. As you can see, I, I, I slipped, hit him again with a hook, slipped out of it, turned him, and, well, that was kind of a push-shove. <laughs> but uh, another look at the right it. hand. There's another right. There's a hook. Basically just following up on my instincts, really. And then you tossed him here. You showed tremendous strength. Yeah, well, I used his leverage against him. Now, you come in here with the... ...and a guy that can punch two. What were your expectations about what you thought he would bring to the table and how this fight was going to unfold? Uh, he brought exactly what I thought, but I knew I could get past him. I knew that, you know, my killer instincts would come into play. Once I sense urgency or I sense someone hurt, I finish him immediately. I, I jump on him. Because why, why go 10 rounds if I can get him out of there right then and there and go home early? <laughs> How soon did you think he was in trouble? Uh, the moment I hit him with that right cross. I think it was a right cross the first time I hit him. and when I saw a look in his eyes that he didn't want any more of that, you know? Now, now fighting a guy this big, what are the, statistic, the stylistic changes that come into play that obviously you took care of? Uh, well, I had to be really careful, you know, because he gets to punch down, and I'm a big guy, so I had to fight short, and I'm not used to that. So, but uh, today I was watching some Mike Tyson videos, kind of inspired me a little bit, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, I, I, I thought, well, hell, I'm going to fight this guy as a shorter man, my, he's, my left hook is going to come with a lot of leverage, and that's exactly what happened, it played out in front of you. Uh, you've ticketed yourself as a guy to watch, and the eyes of the boxing world are on you. Congratulations. Now to the Colonel. All right, thank you, Dave, and really enjoyable to uh, meet and uh, uh, get to know David Rodriguez this week, and I think you can see what a lovely person he is and what a terrific fighter he is. You know, as you take a look at the heavyweight division with the likes of, uh, at the lower end of the top ten, John Ruiz, James Tony. Perhaps Lehman Brewster, Sergei Lyakovich, Nikolai Veluev, and Shannon Briggs. Uh, and we'll leave out the reigning champions, uh, Shigayev, Maskayev, uh, Peters, uh, uh, Klitschko, and Sultani Bragamov. Uh, you, you, you get to think that this guy could maybe fall in there around fifth to sixth if he fought either Briggs, Veluev, uh, Lyakovich, Brewster, Tony, or Ruiz. Of course, he's not going to be fighting Brewster because Brewster has a world title shot coming up in a couple of weeks in Cologne, Germany against uh, Vladimir Klitschko. So so that's out but I think uh, you know Ruiz would be a nice step up because a guy uh, hasn't fought in a while Ruiz, Ruiz is tough as nails he's a former champion this would be a good opponent to test this guy and find out how good David Rodriguez is well coming up in our main event of the evening it's going to be Evander Holyfield and Lou Savarese as you watch uh, David Rodriguez play to his crowd here at the Don Haskins Center and uh, there's a uh, Lou Savarese getting taped up Lou Savarese is a wonderful guy, a terrific human being. In fact, for heavyweights, they don't come any nicer than Evander Holyfield and Lou Savarese. Lou Savarese is an actor, and he's also a terrific fighter. Evander across the way. Look at the body on this guy. Who says this guy shouldn't be fighting? A lot of people have said he shouldn't be fighting. But when you look again at Tony Ruiz, Bruce Delikovich, of course, he had his problems with Tony. But this is a different Evander Holyfield today, Dave Bonjempo. Well, and you know, also, you have the dream of guys like George Foreman, what he did to Michael Moore. Everybody's got their dream. All right, coming up is a scheduled four-round featherweight battle featuring Ricky Vasquez. He hails from Las Cruces, New Mexico.